for me, I've had a different journey into the World Cup. This moment is very, very special for me to announce that you're part of the World Cup roster. Okay? Suffering my knee injury in um, September 2022, so I guess my first focus straight away when I went down with that injury was thinking ahead of the World Cup and that's been my sole motivation and focus every day. I never wanted like a free ticket, I wanted to like defy the odds of just pushing myself to the limit. Any injury when it's so close to a major tournament um, is stressful but you know even more so a long-term injury like my ACL and obviously it wasn't just an ACL, it was an ACL, an MCL and a meniscus. So it's um, yeah, kind of the terrible triad they call it in the medical world. And I guess one thing I've tried to really, yeah, I guess do and, and focus on is to stay present on a day to day, not think too far ahead and stress myself out about time frames about the World Cup coming up um, and kind of dealt with the fact of what was ahead of me immediately when the injury happened and um, I think as soon as I, I got you know, in for surgery um, my, my focus shifted straight away to, to what was ahead of me. It's been long hours in the gym, um, you know, I'd probably get there you know, at 9 o'clock in the morning and not home till 5 or 6 in, in the evening, especially with the physios with Jackie and Pete. Matilda's physios, they've been um, yeah, just pivotal in this whole rehab. Um, along with the whole, you know, support staff and medical staff for the Matildas to help, you know, give me the best opportunity to, to be back for the World Cup. And my girlfriend in the UK has been there for the good and bad days and, and kind of helped me through it. She's had to deal with a few of my, um, <laughs> my mood swings. But um, yeah, I think it's all part and parcel. And um, yeah, I'm hoping that those endless training days of, you know, got me in a position to be um, ready for this World Cup and, and hopefully I can reap the benefits of, you know, all of those blood, sweat and tears that I've put in over the last seven, eight months. Drawing on other experiences with other injuries and, and when I kind of suffered my first um, major injury with a broken leg when I was 15, I feel like that kind of set me up for, I guess, the tough road ahead. From a very early age, she had her tibia and fibula broken deliberately. She was limping, so she was just doing her rehab. And there was two particular parents in front of me who didn't know I was sitting in the car and said she was washed up. She ain't gonna come back from this. And it was just all the negativity. And then I actually just believed in her. Others would have walked away from the game, but she's just come back and she just makes me so proud that she has that get up and go and never say die Kaya needing to draw on that resilience that I probably learned, that mental toughness, which every injury or every setback that I've had, I've kind of had to draw on that and um, just find a way to, to push through it. And yeah, I would say it's it's been ingrained as in me from a very young age, but I think obviously the exposure to, uh, to learn really quick that it's not always smooth sailing um, to be a professional athlete and um, yeah I'd like to think that I've, I've almost mastered the rehab process if you don't believe you can do it then you know you've kind of lost half the battle. Kaya Simon, deflection in. I've loved being back in camp it's always nice to see you know all the staff and, and girls and just be back in that environment. I feel like I thrive in this environment. Um, you know, the work that the support staff around, um, the coaching staff, medical staff, you know, everyone puts in to make us, um, you know, as comfortable and as accommodated as possible so we can excel on the football pitch and kind of rekindling those friendships. It's been a little bit of time since I was last in, so it um, feels like I never left. It's a good cross by Carroll, there's the winner. Simon's done it again. Kaya Simon has rescued it for Australia. I was only um, chatting with a couple of the girls the other day about, you know, I guess where the team was, where it's come from and where it is now. And it's kind of crazy to think that, um, you know, I've been in the, in the team for 14, 15 years and we were having a laugh because we were thinking, where's that time actually gone? But it's definitely been filled with a lot of ups and downs, um, you know, highs and lows. Um, you know, successful moments and, and obviously moments that we've fallen short. So, 
yeah, I mean, the team wouldn't be the team it is today without those moments. And especially for me in the position that I'm in, I feel like I wouldn't be the player that I am without those highs and lows. And definitely gives you an appreciation of where the sport was, where it is now. And, and hopefully we can continue to, um, you know, I guess be foundations for women's football in Australia, but also pioneers and, and carry the sport forward.